Hi and welcome back to That Office Guy. In this video today, we are going to be taking another look at Microsoft Excel and specifically the average ifs function. This is a super useful formula, guys. I use this one all the time. It is very powerful for getting you exactly what you need to have done. Um, so as we get into this, if you find it useful and informative, then do go ahead and hit the like button for me. I really appreciate that. If you are new and you want to stay up to date with all those hints and tips for Microsoft Excel, then do subscribe, tap the bell, select all notifications, and you won't miss another uh, Microsoft Excel tip. Right, um, let's get on into this particular video and dive into how to use this average ifs function. Okay guys, so we're going to start off by talking about the notes here and then we're going to get into the examples on how to use this function, right? So um, first of all, we have to understand what the average ifs function is all about. So um, we have to note that um, if a cell or a value that you're trying to average is blank or contains a text value, then it will return a non-divisible by zero error, okay? So you have to make sure that we're only dealing with numerical um, values, okay? Um, now, if you come back down into the second option here, we can obviously see that um, if a cell in a criteria range is empty, then it will, empty values are treated as zero, okay? And uh, cells in a range that contains true evaluates as one. Um, cells that contain false are also zero, okay? So if we're using uh, you know, a function to determine whether or not a statement is true or false, it's important to note that anything that equals true is actually accounted as a one, and anything that uh, equals false is treated as a zero. Now, each cell in a average range is used um, in the average calculation only if all of the, uh, all of the corresponding criteria specified are true for that cell, okay? So this is where the ifs part of this really comes into play. Um, unlike the uh, range and criteria arguments in the average if function, the average ifs criteria range must be the same size and shape as the sum range, okay? So uh, we'll get into that in a moment. Um, if cells in average range cannot be translated into numbers, average if will return a non-divisible by zero. Um, and if uh, there are no cells that meet the criteria, you'll also get the non-divisible by zero error, okay? And again, you can use wildcards like you can from many of these other um, formulas and functions inside Microsoft Excel. Um, so let's get into the example, right? Because this is where, where we can really get to, to, to grips with what is going on. Um, so we're going to start with, we have a, a list of students down here. Uh, we have their first, second, and third quiz scores, okay? And we're going to use the average function, uh, average ifs function to determine whether or not certain things are, uh, or we're going to average the average score, we're going to average the score by the criteria, right? So the first one we're going to have here is really simple. Um, basically, an average ifs lets us use multiple criteria, unlike average if. Um, but if you wanted to, you could, of course, use average ifs with a single criteria. And this is what I do intend to do a lot. Um, because it means that you only really have to learn one formula. You don't have to do two different types of formula. You can just always use average ifs and you can just bypass average if altogether. Um, so average ifs, we're going to open this up with a bracket and uh, we're basically going to come into the beginning. If I actually open up this, we can see that this actually comes up as the first part of the formula. This first part of the formula where it's B1 to B4 um, as highlighted in blue here, um, this here is your average range. This is the range of cells that you're going to be averaging, okay? Um, then we actually go into the criteria range, okay? The second part just here, also in the same range, okay? Now, it doesn't have to be. Um, in this particular formula, you can specify a different um, average range than the criteria range, okay? But in this particular example, we are using the same one. So we have B2 to B5, okay? The same range. And then we have the criteria. Well, the criteria has to be in the double quotations and it's greater than 70, okay? Um, so this particular part here where it's uh, basically in the double quotations is basically saying, look at all the values that are greater than 70 and give me the average of all of those values that meet that criteria, okay? Now, in this particular example, we also have another B1 to B4 scenario here. Um, and this one, um, or B2 to B5, I should say. And um, this one here is again the same criteria range that we used previously, but we're also now saying less than 90. And you'll notice that again, you have those double quotations, right? So all your criteria has to be inside those double quotations. Now, um, here you have less than 90, right? So in order to get an average um, of these values, it has to be greater than 70, but less than 90, okay? And because we are not using the equal sign here, it is 
not 70 and not 90. So it's either greater than 70, so it has to be 70.0000001, for example, in order to be qualifying for the criteria. Um, and then obviously less than 90, but not 90 itself, okay? Um, and in this particular example, this actually then gives us the average here of 80.5, okay? So that is the average of anything that is greater than um, 70, but less than 90. So i.e. it's greater than 70 here, and less than 90 here. This is an average of 80.5, okay? It's just those two criteria. And we've excluded Julie here at 94 because it is greater than 90. So it's a pretty straightforward and simple process, right? Now, this second formula um, down here, again, average ifs, um, but this time we're only using a single criteria, right? We're basically saying, find me the average of uh, anything that's greater than 95, right? So we can come back into this formula uh, in detail, right? We can see that we're basically now using the C range. We're going from C2 to C5, and that is the range of cells that we're looking to average. We can then obviously take a look and we can see um, that the criteria is also C2 to C5, and then uh, or the criteria range is C2 to C5 with the criteria being 95. And again, the double quotations there um, symbolizing that we are looking for um, that particular value. Now, um, one thing I didn't note on this particular example here um, is that actually, you know, there was a word down here, so text. Text is completely omitted, it doesn't count. Um, so therefore, it was not required to be utilized inside of our um, our formula, right? So basically incomplete is text and is not used in the calculation, okay? So when we actually have a look at this one, and um, we talk about, you know, using all of this data here, there's no text involved. So it is literally all these numbers, are any of them greater than 95? None of them are greater than 95. And as a result, we end up with this non-divisible by zero error, okay? Um, so right now we have to obviously acknowledge that our criteria has not been met. And as a result of this, if we don't want to display the error, we want to then wrap this inside an if error function later on okay um, but for now obviously it's not divisible by zero because there is no value here greater than 95 if we change that obviously you'll get a different result now if we come down to the end here again this is another fantastic way to just demonstrate what's going on with the average ifs function this time we are using the d2 to d5 range this is the range of cells that we're looking to average and the criteria range, this comes in at D2 to D5, same range again. Um, and then the first criteria is basically, is it greater than or less than incomplete? Okay, and obviously the text is utilized there. Okay, and uh, this is another way to just to kind of highlight the fact that we are not wanting the incomplete, we want to count everything else, right? And then we have a second criteria, again, D2 to D5, and we're looking for things that are greater than 80. Okay, so what's greater than 80? Well, it's only these two cells here. This comes in at 87.5, and that is the result that we get given in our cell just here. Uh, what I will do is I'll just move me out of the way there so you can see 87.5 is the result that we're looking for. Okay, so overall, everything is looking pretty good uh, on this particular function, right? Now, what happens if you actually want to use a... Um, and, and a cell as a reference for your calculation rather than physically typing in like 95, 90, 70, or 80. Well, this will be a very simple process. What we'll do is we'll just copy this uh, formula down here for a second. And what I'm going to do is uh, we'll open this up, right? So the first thing we're going to do is customize this formula a little bit. And we're going to get rid of all of the criteria because we don't need that. Um, and what we're going to do is we're just going to rewrite this from the beginning. Okay, this time what we're going to do is we're going to see we have a final score, right? But maybe we want to average the final score based on their secondary score, okay? Um, so basically what we're going to do in this particular scenario is we're going to take our average range as this range of cells here. This is D2 to D5. We're then gonna hit a comma and we're gonna open up, well, what's the criteria? Well, the criteria is gonna be our second range here, okay? Our criteria range, obviously, um, is uh, basically between, you know, the Emily here and all the hands, right? And going all the way down, what we're looking for here is gonna be a criteria. So we're gonna hit comma. Now we open up the criteria range and what criteria do we want? Well, we're gonna put a criteria uh, and we're gonna put it into this cell just here. We haven't done it yet, so it'll come back as an error to start with, um, but we obviously have our criteria just here. Okay, and uh, basically from here, this is a very simple formula. We'll just close it off and press enter. Now we get the error to start with, um, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, let's average everything um, that is actually, you know, I tell you what I didn't do is I didn't actually put in a criteria here. So we're going to go for greater than, um, and then we're going to select this cell here, right? Okay. Um, so it's going to be greater than whatever is in this cell here. That's what we're going to average by. Okay. And, uh, it's important that we also use the ambersand, um, to include the cell reference. Okay. So in quotations, we have, 
um, the greater than, less than, or equal sign, or sometimes it might be greater than and equal to. Um, and then obviously the ampersand with the um, cell reference that we're going to use. Okay, we press return on that. It still comes back as an error until we put a number in here. So we're going to take, um, you know, this same example, right? We're going to take, is it greater than 80, for example? Now this actually brings back 87, right? Uh, we increase the decimal places, make sure that was, uh, everything is coming back here properly. Um, and basically our result is 87. So the average of everything here that is greater than 80. Yeah, so we're basically averaging this range based on this. So straight away we can check to see if we are meeting our criteria correctly. So um, basically um, our criteria has to be greater than 80. There's only um, two references uh, here for this. Actually there's only one um, and an incomplete, right? So straight away we can see why we have a return of an 87. So we're averaging this range here. There's only 85 and um, 93 that are meeting our criteria. Um, incomplete is the text, so that can't be treated and utilized. Therefore, the result is 87. Okay, so quite a straightforward and simple way to do it, but you can make these very, very complicated and complex as your requirements are needed. Now, I will just uh, drop this in so you can see what that looks like. Basically, we did an average if on the D2 to D5 range. Um, the criteria range is our C range here at C2 to C5, which is greater than ampersand E5, which is our reference point. And again, if we were to change this to 95, we would get a different result every single time, right? 75 even. Um, and as we go through here, we can gain C, all those different criteria is getting met and pulling out a different average. Okay, so really easy, really straightforward. You can create a um, dynamic formula based on other cells within your Excel document. And this is something I use a lot, guys. It's a very straightforward and simple formula to use once you get used to using it. Hopefully you have found this video useful and informative, guys. It is a pretty straightforward and easy to use formula once you actually have some time to actually digest what you are doing when it comes to creating these average ifs functions. Guys, if you have found it useful, hit the like button. I appreciate that. If you are new, make sure you subscribe, tap the bell, select all notifications, and in doing so, you will not miss another Excel update. Guys, with that said, done out of the way, I hope everyone has a fantastic day, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Thank you.